Welcome to another edition of Up and In It. I'm your host, Adrian Babishoff, and if you're new here, welcome as well. And if you're wondering what the show is about, it's entirely dedicated to creating an alternative lifestyle design that improves quality of life for both people and for the planet, exploring alternatives to the daily grind through liberation and independence, moving you from surviving to thriving and living life raw. Uh, this is episode 113 today, guys. This is a uh, gardening the biodegradable container way. And you can utilize the things that I teach you, uh, that I share with you today for reg regular gardening in ground, whatever, whatever have you. You can see the principles and, and the, uh, the layouts and the blueprints here, and you can kind of make it your own, which we encourage on this show. We encourage you to think for yourself and make things your own. It's, it's really about alternative lifestyle design. And in alternative lifestyle design, those of you who've listened to previous shows, uh, you've heard that we're kind of... Uh, got a large mixture of different stuff here uh, and as the intro to this show implies we're trying to get you we're trying to free you from the system we're trying to get you to to think for yourself to utilize these tools in any form or fashion that you can so that you gain more liberation and more independence uh, so we have a lot of things to talk about but we're going to do a series here on gardening uh, especially with the uh, COVID situation that we have here and uh, this is July 2020 and uh, we've got a lot of people taking interest in things like this so i thought that i would share uh, some of the information that i know and some of the things that i'm practicing as of right now and that's why i'm limiting my podcast to one per week uh and in hopes that i can get this uh, uh new business and this gardening off the ground we're doing a pretty pretty decent sized project right now i had to hire some help and this is the time where i take my mini retirements and i'm spending that gardening and i wanted to get you guys involved with that but before we do a word this is a potty mouth podcast uh, we try not to uh f-bomb it too much but that's just the way it comes out also today is uh it's six in the morning <laughs> i i didn't even want to get up i barely got the shit out of my eyes uh those of you watching this the lights real dim because it's pretty early in the morning and uh, I'm trying to get the show done before we head out to work. And because I miss you guys, <laughs> I love doing these shows, man. I can't wait till we get back. But we'll just get into the gardening. Enough mumble bumbling. Um, <clears throat> yes, alternative lifestyle design is very important uh, that we learn to garden, to produce our own food. Uh, there's a big trend right now of homeschoolers. And I can see where people are kind of scrambling, I guess. I didn't do too much research on it because I don't really much into that kind of thing. But it sounds like people are trying to figure out ways to teach their kids. We have a whole stay-at-home order. We're in Sunnyside, California and San Diego. And I guess a lot of stuff's going online and a lot of children are having a hard time learning. And I think with gardening, uh, I want to just give you guys a few things before we jump into the details here. Um, the gardening area teaches so much. There's uh, hands-on. I've said this before, the learning pyramid. You can go look that up for yourself. There'll be a few links in the bottom of the show notes today if you guys want to take a look. Uh, but the learning pyramid at the top, the poorest, is when you have to sit and listen to a lecture, listen to someone talk and watch a video, read a book, things like that. Uh, depending, you know, not for all. One shoe doesn't, you know, fit all. But for the majority of people, they don't really retain a lot of information. It's the poorest sense. It's, it's, I think they said something like 10 to 15 percent absorption rate of information by listening to lectures and things like that. Whereas at the bottom, uh, the best way is to learn something, get hands on and immediately turn around and start practicing or teaching it yourself. So the beautiful part that I'd hope with children is that you'd be able to not only teach them about biology, mathematics, and physics, especially the things I'm doing with physics <laughs> and the gardening. Uh, we're hanging uh, baskets. We're doing all kinds of crazy stuff that we want to share with you guys soon. But yeah, you can teach them a whole lot of things. And I think that it could inspire them, as I said on the uh, episode 112, where my mom gave me some nasturtium seeds and I planted them. And I happened to see them taking over the whole planter and the whole front portion of the house. And it was just like, oh, wow, that one little seed turned into all of that. Uh, then you get to eat it. Uh, I think that's empowering, if not one of the most empowering things that we have in life is growing our own food it it evokes emotions and things to get barefoot to put your feet in there but also to share it's just like human instinct and i forgot how wonderful it was because it happened to me the other day uh, i'm gardening i'm spin farming for those of you who don't know on somebody else's property i don't own the land but i own all my soil in my container gardenings and i get to take that anywhere i want but right now i'm on this person's property and she's gardening as well <clears throat> and we happened to swap some stuff that i had 
that I didn't have, she gave, and I gave her stuff that she didn't have, plants and seeds and actual food, and the feeling of that just is invigorating. It's just, it's wonderful. Um, I think that it's an investment. I think that's like printing your own money. There's somebody on the internet, I forgot, somebody, some famous gardener guy or something, but it goes through the tone of this, of think about it. You get a tomato and you get one seed and you plant that in the ground. How many seeds does that uh, um, plant produce for you? By hundreds off that one seed, it feeds you. We talk a lot about stacking functions, have, making things have uh, multiple uses. So not only are you getting a meal, you're getting aesthetics, you're working on your health, you're also getting an abundance of seeds, thousands if not millions of seeds depending on how much gardening you do. You can open up a butternut squash and you can keep like over a hundred seeds possibly, I think, depending on the size of your butternut squash and it just keeps multiplying. Therefore, it's like printing money and it's also like printing your health, if that makes any sense. It does it to me right now because it's too early in the morning. But enough babbling on about how great that is. Um, let's skim over. Uh, we're going to talk about irrigation today and also sequence of events, things that need to happen uh, when you first start out. It's kind of like a beginner's guide some simple stuff here and even if you are experienced I think you might get a few things so in episode 112 uh, we uh, went and we dug a trench and we made our fence to keep out the such things as rabbits and squirrels and things like that um, we got our chicken wire to keep up your keep your dogs out maybe even keep uh, your their kids or your your family's kids or the neighborhood kids out something keep that stuff out um, we also built a little trellis so that we can hang some of our plants we can start growing vertically and the importance i want to say next is that um well first of all i talked about the mulch and i don't think i gave you guys the depth the magic number for me in my area is six inches of wood chip mulch that's going to keep the weeds out uh, and that's going to help you level off your pots uh, if you're on an incline or something and you've got some container gardenings and there it's on, on a little hill the water is going to spill to one area it's going to want to follow the laws of physics and uh, once we get the, the uh, wood chips in there, you can kind of move it back and forth to settle it to get it just the way you want it. And as we said, stacking functions keeps the weeds out. My opinion uh, would go no less than six inches. But um, there's, it's very important, these steps. This, the reason why I'm giving these uh, um, shows in sequence here is because if you didn't have that fence set up and you, didn't, you said, well, I'll do the trellis later, uh, you'd be surprised when you start growing things when you turn around uh, um, and you do things my way, you're gone for about a week at a time and you don't even see the garden. You come back, once tomatoes and, and vining plants like like uh, uh, zucchini and uh, cucumbers and stuff just start shooting up. And then it comes, oh my God, I need to get the trellis set up. So it's nice to have everything all set up in advance. Uh, there's also things like you start working on, you know, making your pots or, or digging your garden or something. And the, and the conversation today is about irrigation. And uh, if you don't have that set up first, then you got to hand water and it starts turning things into kind of a mess. So it's kind of nice to get organized, sequence of events of things that need to happen before other things can happen. So this is definitely going to help you guys out a lot. Uh, one more word on weeding and uh, irrigation, the time consumption of it. So that's what we're going to talk about today is, is a lot of automating uh, your uh, your watering and a little bit about toxicities and, and different ways of uh, what can happen with water. But uh, one of the things I studied was spin farming and one of the most time consuming things was uh, watering and weeding. And basically what they did is they broke down the day of running a spin farm operation. Now this is for growing food to sell to some sort of industry, a restaurants, uh, groceries, or just even a CSA, a collective uh, um, association of people who want to buy stuff. So what is happening is I would say it was crazy. So they basically took you down like Monday would be like two, two and a half hours weeding, and then you're gonna spend another hour watering and then you're gonna spend another hour seeding, and then you're gonna do this. They broke it down, and what I noticed was the biggest time consumers, uh, time consumption uh, uh, components to gardening was the watering and the weeding. And that's what I'm looking for you guys. You may be busy as me. I run, I own my own company, um, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm all over the place. I'm a single father with a special needs kid. Um, I'm changing di uh, 13 year olds diapers, I'm making dinners, I'm running a business, I'm trying to close deals. I don't have time to sit here and screw around and it's very, it's it just really sucks when 
things when you start to garden you put all this work in and shit hits the fan and you know you lose plants and you've got all kinds of just and the critters got it it's just it makes you just go i don't want to do this anymore and I don't want that. I want you guys to garden and I want to show you guys how we've streamlined this to make it so easy that pretty much anybody can garden. If I can do this, you guys can do it. All right, so let's get into irrigation. So we're gonna start off first with your pipe source, which is your tap faucet. And uh, sometimes they're made out of brass, sometimes they're made out of uh, 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 copper. There could be just different stuff. M most common I think is brass. And uh, so we have our hose bib. And don't worry if you've got, uh, you know, your garden set way away from the hose, the, the, the hose bib there. Uh, you can extend a, ho a watering hose and we can set up your, your irrigation no problem. You won't have to actually do some plumbing work. You could do it all on the uh, surface. But the very first thing we're going to do, if you've got your, um, whether you got a hose that you're hooking up to the hose bib or your garden's right there already installed with a hose bib, is we're going to need some Teflon tape. Teflon tape is said that it's uh, non-toxic. They use it for gas lines. They use it for drinking water lines. And this is the thread where you're literally going to thread your water hose into the, the brass. Uh, what I like to do is put on some Teflon tape. And I'm going to give you guys a tip. Your water hoses are going to turn clockwise to tighten, right? And that's how you want to apply your Teflon. You want to put it... You want to start at the uh, say the left hand side and then you want to start rolling it over towards your towards your right you want to go about at least three times in this in this direction clockwise and then you want to smooth it with your finger reason why is when those threads of the hose goes on it's going to uh follow that that uh that seam it's not going to buck the seam whereas if you go counterclockwise and you start turning that hose you see what's going to happen it's going to unravel all of that teflon so let's get some teflon on there and also a word on that is um, I've, they've got the rubber grommets that go inside this little uh, hose, hose washer. That's supposed to stop the water from squirting out. Uh, I found that by working, moving the hose around sometimes, things like that, that it'll just start squirting and leaking on you. And you don't want that. We want to be done with it. The Teflon tape eliminates that problem. Uh, give it a one little a quarter turn with a pair of pliers just to cinch it and you're done you'll need pliers or, or uh, better yet get yourself a crescent wrench to do this so you don't strip your water hose um, but yeah you want to cinch that up and then you will you will have zero problems one thing i would recommend too is that you get yourself a four-way brass uh a fitting that goes onto your hose bib I'm sorry, your, your uh, uh, main water line to give yourself four outlets because sometimes it's nice to have a water hose. Sometimes you want a timer. Sometimes you're going to go into detail in further episodes of how you can hook up different things, different watering mechanisms. So you kind of want to give yourself those four and uh, that turns your, your faucet from one to four and you can hook up your water hose and all that kind of stuff and do it all with Teflon on all these joints. Uh, next. So we're going to go into automating the water, as we said earlier, how much time it takes to sit there and hover over your garden, which is a wonderful thing. And I think it is healthy because it gives you time to observe your plants and spend time with your plants. Uh, but um, on a, you know, let me just shoot off real quick. It was we were playing classical music while we're working on the farm, and I think the plants love it. <laughs> but there's a lot more time that you can spend observing your plants and sitting down having a beer or some lemonade and just sitting with them and watching the birds and the insects and everything happening rather than when uh, wasting time, in my opinion, watering. Although it does have its relationship because it kind of makes you feel like you're giving it uh, some nutrients, like you're, you're tending to it, which you, in, in, in theory, you are. But for all of us busy people, we kind of need to really get get moving we got a lot of shit going and i think the most craziest the most powerful thing that you're gonna have in your garden is observation and i love just sitting there observing and watching things i'll spur off one more time before we get back in one of the things that uh um i'm a freak guys <laughs> one of the things i observed yesterday is we have these cabbage moths coming and they're um flying around trying to lay their eggs so that their worms could have something to eat now these cabbage moths love things like cabbage calabri uh, they love spinach, they love lettuce, and they basically lay these little worms and they will decimate your garden within like three, four days. They will have half your, your uh, bucket of lettuce gone. Uh, what I noticed though is they don't go on tomato bushes. So in a, I, wanted to, I just want to stress this power of observation here is that one of the things I looked at is what if you took your tomato leaves and all the residuals that you have and you mushed them up into a blender strained it out into a sort of tea put that in a spray bottle and use that as an insecticide or as a as a preventative you'd spray plants like cabbage and stuff with tomato juice 
Uh, I think it's more natural. I think and it's free. It just takes a little bit of elbow grease. And I'm thinking these cabbage moths don't like the smell. They know that that tomato bush is not suitable for their uh, babies to live. So if they went to something that was, but it smelled like tomatoes, it may deter them. It probably is already done. But I just wanted to get that out. Those are the kind of things that you can get when you have it more automated. So I'm all about automating as much as possible. So getting it back, uh, sorry guys. I think that this stuff might be of interest to you guys though. Very important. So our next one from our hose bib on uh, one of our lines now is gonna be a timer. And you can look, I can make a whole show, I guess, of timers and stuff, but they're pretty simple. I like getting um, the ones from Home Depot. They're about 40 bucks. Uh, and it's got a little dial, very self-explanatory. Uh, uh, I don't think I need to run you guys through it unless you guys uh, um, want me to do a more extensive in it. But it's it's only got a few settings. You can set the timer to the exact time that you have going on right now. Like, look at your phone. Six in the morning, seven in the morning is when I prefer to water. And also six and seven uh, in the evening when the sun's not out baking stuff, especially in the middle of you know July. But this timer will set off uh, a minute, two minutes, three minutes. It'll set off another uh, setting is... Um, obviously, when do you want it to go off, what time, uh, but also for how long, uh, and also how many times a day. Uh, it could go from every six hours to every 12 hours to every day to every other day, every three days, every four days, and so on. And um, we're going to get into uh, uh, the irrigation later and why this is important. But it's really nice. You set that up, and you're going to run this your hose, which we're going to go into here next, and everything set it and forget it. I literally do not, uh, in my gardening system, I don't touch anything. The only thing I touch is maybe a weed that happens to pop up every once in a while. But the watering, it's done. Um, so yeah, we want to put our, our timer as our next one. The uh, follow-up next is you want to put a backflow preventer. And a backflow preventer is very simple. And you can find all these things at Lowe's and Home Depot's or your hardware store. Uh, basically, it's a, a threaded uh, fitting, which goes right onto the uh, nozzle of your timer. You see your, your water's coming in from the hose bib into the timer. The timer has this little piston thing, this little uh, lock that will actually stop the water from pressurizing and therefore stop your garden. Next, we have the backflow preventer, and that's going to stop water when it fills up your uh, your automated irrigation. It expands, it gets pressure, right? And when you shut it off, what happens? It wants to go backwards. So we don't want any sediments or anything like that backflowing into our timer to destroy it. But you also don't want some of that dirt and stuff like that to actually get inside your hose lines uh, and your main water system and end up in your house. So the backflow preventer just is like a one-way valve. Things get to go out of it but nothing could come back in. It's, I believe it's got a little hole on the side, so the stuff that's pressurizing, that's trying to get back in uh, uh, through, it, through the uh, source will actually squirt out the side until it depressurizes and everything stops. Uh, kind of like a diode, uh, an electrical. I don't know how, but it lets electricity through but won't let it go back in your solar panels so that when you have your batteries and things like that, uh, it, it'll, a diode will prevent the batteries from continually draining. So as I said on the show too, you learn one thing and your skills it drives you into another. This is a perfect example of learning about electricity and plumbing and seeing how the two work. Once you get the gist of one, you get the gist of the other. Very powerful stuff. So moving from the backflow preventer, we're going to want to put a filter. Uh, and this has, looks like a little drinking water filter. It's got a little canister and inside it's got a small little screen cylinder. And that's what happens is that water comes into the center of the cylinder and, and the metal screen or poly uh, 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 plastic screen, whichever you get in there, is going to filter out all the debris and it's all going to get stuck in the center. And everything from the outside comes out of another hole in this little canister and goes into your drip irrigation where it's not going to get everything all gunked up and plugged. So you want to check this thing every once in a while, but it's very handy to have uh, to make sure everything's running smooth. Uh, you don't as I said, we're automating this thing. The only thing you need is some, uh, I think it's two AA batteries and a lot of these uh, uh, water timers. That's the only thing that you're going to be doing maybe every six months or so. The other one is you're going to be checking maybe once every month, two months, maybe even three to empty out the water filter, clean, spray it out with a hose and assemble it right back. And it's very, very simple. So we got our filter down. Now we need to get a pressure regulator. Now, a lot of home pressure has some very high PSI, pressure per square inch. And uh, what will happen is it'll blow, like say if you've got misters or, or even sometimes a water hose gets in the sun. I've had them 
uh, because I buy mostly non-toxic hoses, well, they don't have much integrity to them, and they blow up like a balloon, and when the sun heats them, they get hot, and they get soft, and that water pressure's in there, and then pop, you get home, and your entire backyard's flooded. We don't want that. Uh, so we got a pressure uh, regulator, pressure reducer. Uh, this screws into the backflow preventer. It's all This all goes in line. All these things I'm telling you is like step number one, put your hose bib, you know, your fitting. Then put your, your uh, uh, backflow preventer, your timer, and then your backflow preventer. Now we're on our pressure regulator. So a pressure regulator goes in and drops the PSI, I believe, down to like 25 pounds per square inch. And it gives it just enough pressure to work. Uh, I'd say like, I forget what it was, 150 or 250 feet of drip irrigation line. Might have been 300. I can't remember off the top of my head right now. But it gives you enough pressure to run a really long, significant amount of hose. And that's going to be ran to your garden there uh, with 25 PSI. And you're going to be all, you're all set up. The next thing on that goes onto there is going to be now is where we bring our poly tubing, our, our garden irrigation tubing. We're going to have to get a fitting that all you have to do is is cram up into like this little, uh, uh, I don't know if this is going to be wrong for people, but in the construction industry, they say it all the time, the male and female. So we're just going to call it that. The uh, We're going to have a female part, uh, which screws into the uh, pressure regulator, right? Uh, and then we're going to stick the poly tubing, the half inch poly tubing, until it clicks, until it, so you can get about a, at least about an inch into this little fitting and that's it. It's like these little snap. You just snap them and you forget them. That hooks into the pressure regulator. Now we have that long old hose right there for our, our, our half inch poly tubing. And we're all set. It's as easy as that. Just push the pieces together. So we've got our, our hose and we're uh, we're going to run that out. We're going to, it's a big reel that comes in half inch and it's black. Uh, there was some NSF approval, which means it's it's suitable for potable water. I've had a hard time finding that again. Uh, so I'm assuming the stuff at Home Depot is okay, but we're doing the best that we can. It is biodegradable container gardening. I'm going to tell you here in a minute how you can make it 100% biodegradable. Unfortunately, using these poly tubings, this plastic, it's not. There's a certain percentage of the biodegradable container gardening systems that's, yeah, that's that's got to be plastic. For now, uh, we're working on it. So... Yeah, you've got your hose hooked up now, and you have multiple things. I'd advise to you guys, I know at the uh, depot, I'm not affiliated with anybody here, but i use been using the, uh, uh, well, whatever, uh, I don't want to free advertise people here, but they have booklets and they have stuff online where you can see all these fittings. And I'll just finish up with the, the last one on your, your half-inch poly tubing. It's the same thing that, that, that making this into like a hose that fits into the whole uh, uh, watering timer system at the other end. You can also get a fitting that just snaps right on the end that opens up uh, um, like a valve and you can actually drain the uh, pipe out. Uh, we said that we were going to do a water filter before everything, but we still get sediments. It's very important to have the end cap, the end of that two inch uh, uh, poly line uh, open so you can flush out any debris that get in it. Um, you can also pinch the end and they have little fittings too. You just double it over and that stops the water from preventing and uh, from going out and it keeps your pressure. So we have, that's our irrigation. Um, it's probably a lot. I think that I've been uh, uh, rambling a lot. I'm going to give you guys some more, but I'd say we kind of take a break and go off into a little bit more subject before we start going into the snapping of the parts that go into your, your garden. I want to talk about uh, polyurethane hoses. Uh, we're, I just said it was talking about NSF and toxicity. And I think that the uh, these things are made out of polyurethane. They're, they've got uh, uh, CF, uh, I'm sorry, they have NSF approval. Uh, polyurethane is a very hard durable just like silicone and if you if you silicone is more softer so it's used for cooking utensils so it doesn't abrade and also for uh, body implants and stuff like that so as many uses it doesn't break down it's got very uh, high uh, uh, solids I guess uh, in the roofing industry we use it because it's uh, UV protected it, it seals everything up uh, and it also uh, um, it doesn't decompose so it doesn't doesn't off gas I believe and uh, you can literally collect the rainwater off your roof and drink it, of course, with uh, uh, some uh, having to you know, filter it out properly and everything. So, but these polyurethane hoses, uh, polyurethane is the same thing. It's, it's very durable. They use it for floors and stuff and all kinds of like for planters and lining, I think even parking lots. So somebody's made this hose 
and uh, I don't want to step on any fingers. I'm new here at uh, doing these shows, and I don't know if I can get in trouble, so I don't want to mention the name, but go out there and look for a polyurethane hose. Do yourself a favor. They're kind of expensive. I think I got an 80-foot, uh, half-inch, 100-foot uh, for like 88 bucks. But it's very high. It's very durable. The fittings are made out of brass and really nice. Uh, it doesn't really kink up as easy. Uh, and but the thing I want you guys to do is go get a regular old garden hose, and I want you to leave it in the sun, and I want you to stick it to your sniffer and your nose and smell what the inside of that hose smells like. Hell, just taste the water that's sitting in there, uh, even after you rinse it out. Uh, let it run for a while. Then take yourself the polyurethane uh, hose and smell that. There's out virtually almost no smell. And we're, I'm all about growing food with less, less toxins and actually eco-friendly, uh, as I said, improving quality of life for both people and for the planet, for the earth, to make sure that we, um, you know, we do our best to not uh, take a shit on it, basically, and ourselves. Uh, those water hoses, I think, are very important. I think they're very toxic. Uh, water nozzles is the, is the next one. The, uh, you know, your gardening ones. Take a look at those things, and I think that uh, they've got lead in them. Because see, there's a little part, there's a little lever inside there that needs to turn. It needs to fit tight against something. Uh, lead is very soft, and when when you have a piece of steel or whatever it is, brass in there, a little ball valve, say, it needs something like plastic or something that'll actually rub really hard and seal and stop the pressure of the water coming out. So I believe there's lead in these things. They're all made in China, basically. If you go to the, any hardware store. And it says on there, caution, note in the state of California to cause cancer and birth to have chemicals to know to, to, to cause these sort of things. So if that's of interest to you, uh, I'm still working on that one. I think there's a little ball valve thing that you can turn uh, manually with your hand instead of like the wand. It's a pain in the ass because those wands are so nice. So it has a mister and it's got all these settings, which makes gardening way easier. It's what I use right now until I find a different uh, uh, way uh, to maybe invent a certain squirter or something but right now I'm using those and they're they're very handy but it's just something that you might want to consider taking a look into now those garden wands are definitely your friend in the garden so remember we were saying too that we wanted that four prong starting way off at the beginning with the uh, the uh, hose bib that we wanted four of those this is where you're gonna hook up your garden hose just in case your drip irrigation shuts off or you need to rinse something out you're mixing soils or putting amendments inside your your garden and you go ahead and water them and mist them all down so it's always good to have that auxiliary hose but I prefer polyurethane uh, with the water nozzle uh, if you wanted to get rid of all of this stuff and you have the time, which I don't, you can go get yourself a galvanized watering can. Instead of plastic, get yourself a galvanized metal watering can. And those are those kind you know you've seen in the old days. I think you still see them nowadays where it's got a little a little spigot at the end with a little shower head and you can just fill up about a gallon, two gallons, five gallons, and you can just tip it and pour it and it gives a gentle uh, stream of water. You can fill that up. In fact, you can leave it in the sun so it's not, it gets a little warm for your plants. Your plants may like instead of ice cold water on them. Beautiful thing. You wouldn't have to go through all this, but you have to wake up early in the morning to water your plants every single day and you will need in certain summertime you may even need to come midday and you may even need to come in the afternoon most guaranteed you're gonna have to at least go to your garden to water twice a day and if you got that time good on you and good for the planet for right now us busy people are going to have to automate things and that's why we're going with the drip irrigation but I wanted to say out there um, we're nowhere near towards all the information I have on the biodegradable container gardening systems that I've I've got here but with that you can make it uh, a pretty much 100% biodegradable 100% there'll be nothing left if you took this my systems and you left them for like 15 years there'd be a pile of rust and there'd be an old rusty a big big pile of rust where your watering can was and there'd be these decomposed wood chips that turned into magnificent soil and you would find nothing but a little bit of rust in the soil and also um, decomposed wood chips the thing that I, I wanted to say about galvanized steel too is that it's uh, coated with zinc and, and when it gets when it gets water or starts to decompose it puts small amounts of zinc in the soil which the the soil needs anyways uh, it's used very widely in uh, uh, garden and farming and it's not the best because it decomposes but it lasts pretty much a long time so that's why I'm into galvanized steel I uh, use for everything of my chicken wire fencing my baskets and stuff which we're gonna get into so I thought I'd get some good stuff for you guys and moving on with some more good stuff uh, I put a link in the description below 
I want to talk about some Twilight zone stuff here. And you can tell me if this makes sense. I'm definitely interested, and I think I'm going to give this one a try. But it's uh, called Structured Water. And it's uh, Joanne, uh, which is, I, don't know, I forget where this guy's from, Austria or something, Grander. Uh, you can call him John Grander. And if you type in John Grander Structured Water or you hit the link below, it'll take you to this documentary about how this guy just started studying water. And how he restructurized it and how water naturally flows over streams and has this pattern to where it energizes itself. And how do they know this? Because they tested it. There was one, I think it was uh, a bread maker, uh, uh, a bakery. They used the structurized water in their breads and their breads had a bit different flavor. They said that the, the, the rose, the, the, they, uh, you know, when you put the yeast in there and your bread rises, it uh, rose faster or something, but they were selling their bread. People just loved it. It had this certain flavor, and all they did was use structurized water. Um, there was another one with irrigating plants, and they showed where they used structurized water and where they didn't. And the plants were definitely, you could see significant uh, um, uh, difference in the structurized water. Also, a factory said that their water would, uh, they're rinsing off parts and stuff like that. They're, they're trying to recycle the water as much as possible. And they said they'd have to change it like every month or something it'd get all this bacteria and using the structurized water they only had to do it every four months like it extended it the structurized water helped was easier on the parts very fascinating very interesting am i saying this is something i 100 percent believe in not yet but i'm almost there i'm like damn so i think i need to make a youtube video with this stuff i'm on a budget though these things are it's this little fitting part you'll see in the documentary uh there's this little fitting you got to buy that goes on your hose bib and it's supposed to change everything and i think we should do one without and one with and see what we get i'm very i'm kind of ex really excited about that all right so we took a break and now we're going to get back into the irrigation here what we're going to do is uh we need to make these uh drippers right so we've got our half inch tubing so we everything was set from the water faucet uh it comes over to your garden um in the last video, we made a 10 by 10 foot little uh, coop, a little fence for your four by four, your square foot garden or whatever garden you want to do, right? So the very first thing is when we, we just made our, our, our half inch pipe, our, our half inch hose coming in, this is where we're going to uh, poke holes in it and we're going to put drippers in. So what you want to do is run this over to where your garden is. And, and in my opinion, what you might want to do is run it around the whole border of the fence. Right now we have a 10 by 10 foot garden. What we're going to do is we're going to run that around the outskirts. That way we have places to plug in all the way around in 360 degrees. One of the things I did too was I took and uh, put the uh, aligned uh, dead center right down my garden in between my four by four foot garden space. That way I can hook up drip irrigation right to the center. I can reach over two feet in either direction from from, from uh, east or west and I can I can get hands on it and we can um, we can just we can work. It makes it a lot more convenient. So configure it the way you want but I recommend that you do a whole out a line of the the bottom uh, edge of your um, uh, fencing and that way it gives you you can always plug stuff in and cut it later and kind of modify it but you got that whole ring basically set so what we have is um, in my design now you can do this uh, you know what we forgot though let's rewind real quick oh a word on soaker hoses okay we're no we got it next I'm sorry okay so yeah I want to talk to you guys the way I'm doing uh, well, since I brought it up now, we have to talk about soaker hoses. Soaker hoses, if you don't know, is this very porous little quarter inch pipe, right? This little hose, rather, not a pipe. It's a hose. It's very flexible. You can move this thing in figure eights, wherever you can lay these all around your plants, and it emits water from the whole entire surface in little tiny droplets. Very, very convenient. All right? Very convenient. Made out of recycled tires. I believe I sent another link on the bottom of this uh uh, of the show notes here I did some research on uh, because of those things you see, just smell them again like the hose just just let them sit in the sun or just grab go to the store grab a pile of them and just smell it in your nose and tell me it doesn't smell like some sort of crazy fucking chemical um, these things in my opinion are not good and the reason why I want to tell you this is that uh, in landfills they what I read is that t that tires are so toxic they have to scrape the dirt out from which the tires were sitting uh, above and get rid of it uh, these things are bad so in the link below there's a government agency who is saying it's actually said in there it's considered a hazardous substance especially when it's uh, when it melts the catches on fire and also sitting there gassing off they use these things for kids playgrounds and you can it's 
It's horrific. Uh, in my opinion, anything that doesn't break down, uh, polyurethane and uh, silicone, I think, may be an exception to it, but because they don't stink. But pretty much even those two, I would say anything that doesn't break down is not natural, guys. There's some sort of chemical holding it together. The laws of nature is basically like the laws of physics. Everything decomposes. Uh, and you will learn that very fast in gardening. Everything gets born and everything dies. And if it doesn't decompose, there's definitely something wrong with it. In my book anyway. So it's definitely uh, convenient as shit. But I don't really care for them. So what I use instead is a poly uh, uh, tubing. And there's these quarter inch tubings. Uh, I get mine brown so that they're they're uh, they kind of blend in with a little bit more with the dirt, but not really. Uh, they're, they're a lot more prettier than black, but you can kind of see like your your dripper part. So these things have drippers inside of them every six inches. It's this little plastic tube, and inside it's got holes, a little hole every six inches, and in there is a little emitter. And what these things are going to do is they're going to drop. I think it was a half a gallon per hour, and it just drips and drips and drips. We are doing. In my nick of the woods, we're not doing in-ground in gardening. We're doing on top of the ground, but we're basically doing container gardening. But even if you are doing dirt gardening and you don't want to use those soaker hoses, you can use the, these these things that I'm, I'll sp I'm speaking of today. So basically what I like is I get four drippers per line, right? So meaning we get a 100-foot reel of this stuff, and we're going to count... Uh, one, two, three, four of those drippers that are spaced out every six inches, and then we're going to chop them off right in between the fourth emitter and the fifth emitter, which gives us about a little three inch uh, um, spacing in the tubing. We're going to cut that off, and now we're left with this little string with four, four uh, emitters on it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take some quarter inch tubing, which you can also find uh, at the, any hardware store, and they have these little snappy parts. Again, you should probably familiarize yourself with the uh, manual on it or look on YouTube. Uh, I might do a YouTube video on it soon. Um, but you, it has like a like a little two way, like a, a it's a nipple basically, and this is where the male female part comes in good. So the nipple is more of the fem the male part, the hose is the female. You literally snap these together, and now you have another end that can snap into the 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 half inch poly tubing, the big one that you have around the main line basically. We'll refer to it as the main line. So you can get a hole puncher that they have a little tool, little hand tool, and you can punch a little hole directly in there. It's very simple, very easy. Just make sure your water's not on because you get squirt in the face. You can take these little fittings, these little quarter inch tubes that I'm talking about and you just literally just push them like a button and they snap right into that hose and you can make as many of these as you want that's the beauty about this so what I do is I take about a, a two foot piece of this black tubing um, and I put the little the male uh, nipple on the end that can snap into the the half inch pipe I'll take that and I'll cut that in half and I'll actually put a turn uh, an on and off valve uh, you can get a quarter inch valve which can shut that that one little soaker hose on or off and it's very handy especially here Southern California, we have a water issue. And we want to conserve water. So you can shut that off if you needed to work on stuff or if you've got no activity going on in that area. Meanwhile, nothing ever stops uh, on the the rest of your plants. Kind of spendy. Kind of a little, you know, you're going to spend an extra three, four dollars or a dollar per uh, line with these things if you, unless you buy them in bulk. But uh, in my book, it's like I'm paying some help for somebody to grow me nutritious food that's going to feed me and help me for the rest of my life. And actually, it's an investment. So seeing, looking at it that way, um, definitely a, a good go. But So we got our drip irrigation, the black line, which has no holes in it. We have a little uh, a valve that shuts it on and off in between. We have the other end. Now we have a little L uh, uh, nipple, we'll call it. And this same thing as a male end and another male end is shaped like an L on 45 degree. You're going to take that and you're going to stick that, wedge that, snap that into the end of the black line. And then you're going to take your brown hose that has your drips, your four drips on it. And you're going to snap that into the other end of the elbow. Now we're left with like this L shape with a valve on top. And on the other end, what we're going to do is we're going to get a little zip tie or you're going to get a, uh, uh, some galvanized steel, which I prefer. And you're going to make it look like it pops the outline of a, uh, of a, um, uh, what do you call that? Not a popsicle, but a, a candy, a lollipop. There we go. It's It's got a stick, stake that goes in the ground. On the top, it has a little loop. You can form, find yourself some sort of tool, bend your, your quarter inch uh, tubing in half, get yourself a pair of pliers, like a pair, of, that's what I've got for me. It works perfect, the handles. And you're gonna wrap that galvanized wire around that handle and make it, and then, and then uh, twist it like a twisty tie. And you're gonna leave that little lollipop, that little loop. Make a, find something that fits the quarter, uh, the, the quarter inch tubing just perfect when it's folded in half, it's kinked. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna slide that, that end, the very end of this thing, into that lollipop uh, ring, 
and then that's going to work as a stake as well to hold the hose down next to where you need it to uh, uh, irrigate your plants. Uh, if you ever need it, there, the thing plugs up, you could pull this lollipop ring thing off, open up that little quarter inch hose, turn on the valve and flush whatever sediments are in there to hopefully clean out the, the drippers. Because you see the drippers have little tiny holes. So a little, you can imagine little minuscule amounts of soil and dirt and stuff get in there. It's going to plug them up. By opening the end, it'll flush up the line. You don't want to close off any of these ends ever. So the next thing you can do, you can get these at uh, any hardware store or you can make your own. All you got to really do is make a, a U style, like a staple out of some galvanized wire or they sell them pre-made uh, again in the drip irrigation sections of your hardware store. Uh, either way, uh, you're going to need these things to coil this four inch uh, dripper around like say a tomato. So what I like to do is I'll put it at, at one end, I'll coil it about maybe six inches away around the perimeter of my tomato bush or whatever I'm doing. And then you're going to use these little staples to staple them into the dirt. And I usually use uh, only two. I do one at the base right where the, the L was to hold that from moving and also one in the center and then you got the lollipop ring at the end to hold that so you have three stakes holding it positioning it wherever you want now when you're doing container gardening and five gallon buckets and things like that these things work the the, the dimensions for now unless i come up with something better because we're in our experimental stages uh come out perfect and the thing that i like is that uh, a problem with irrigation is sometimes you can irrigate too much. So if you're doing worm compostings and amendments, you have so much water coming, it's basically just leaching your soil. So what I've done uh, to some to finish this all up, because I don't think I have anything here left on my notes for you guys, uh, except for misters, yeah. So what I've done is I've taken um, this drip irrigation line with the four drippers, and you can put it inside of a glass, and you can turn on the timer for a minute. Um, uh, your, your automatic water timer. You can turn it on and say, I want to water it for 60 seconds. And in that 60 seconds, I, I put this whole entire unit inside of a jar and found out that I'm getting one cup of water per minute. So now this tells me, oh, okay, depending on the soils you're using and things like that, if I want uh, a, a gallon of water per day for say something like tomatoes during the summer, it's adjustable. I already know how much, how just multiply how many cups per gallon. Uh, and if I want to do just one gallon per day, I can hook these things up put them to the timer and say water for whatever minutes it equals uh, the math I'm not going to do it in my head right now here but you got four drippers at at a, a half a gallon per hour you do the math and it tells you the timing this is very powerful too because if you're getting into gardening and water is expensive like here in Sunnyside California uh, you can kind of get into general idea of like let me see worst case scenario if I had a gallon per day per tomato and I grew these things is it even profitable is it even worth it and if you wanted to go huge scale, you would know exactly how much water that you would need uh, doing container gardening, uh, and I think even in-ground gardening, to kind of see a ballpark figure of like, well, how much water would I actually be using? Uh, so very handy. It teaches, again, as I said, teaches mathematics and physics and biology and all kinds of different things. Uh, the one thing... I would like to add to automating is my seed starting and I don't want to get into the seed starting part but I wanted to get into the last part of irrigation which is misters and I've used these things the same thing you can they have these these wonderful misters that are actually uh, um, bendable they're like a, uh, a whatever you call it I don't know they're like they, they stay to, the, they, to their form right and they get there about eight inches with a little mister head on the end you can get that black tubing now as, as I was saying that the, the without any uh, uh, holes in it without any drippers it's just this quarter inch and you can make those little nipple things as I was saying and configure whatever you want even with a shutoff valve now you can take this make it long enough you can actually hang this mister over say a certain portion of your garden and you can turn it on just to miss things to get to create humidity or to keep uh, your to get your seedlings going so it's not super overhead watering where you can wash out the seeds or anything it gives it a light mist and you can uh, you can run yourself a whole another system with a filter such as I did just for misters alone if it's if it's uh, conducive for you so you have the power to to and then you have the shutoff valve so you can miss say like a, a bucket of seeds or a batch of seeds in your garden for a week till they start to germinate you can shut that off and then instantly turn on your uh your in-ground uh four dripper system to keep the soil going so you see the power of this stuff uh, and you can also put those misters inside of a jar set it for a minute and see how much you get uh, for me i think it was three minutes gave me a, a cup of water so it's very mathematically uh, predictable and very manageable. And that's how my garden, my container gardening system, I garden and I barely do. It's, it takes me hardly any effort whatsoever.
So that's the show, guys. Uh, I know this is kind of hard to explain in words for those of you who are uh, watching this on YouTube or on uh, um, or listening to the podcast. Um, I do have some stuff that I've got on uh, Instagram, which is which is the uh, Sandy. Which I'm sorry, the bio. I'm the BC gardening guy. That's what it is. Not the either. Uh, B as in boy, C as in cat, gardening guy. Go to Instagram, and that's where I, I've been doing some videos on step by steps of how I'm doing all this stuff. I will have more coming down the pipe. This week's been a little uh, erratic because we're, I've got some hired help, and we're doing some pretty large stuff here. Uh, we're expanding on this thing to get more uh, um, experiments and stuff going, but it's everything's going well. It's gone so well that I've decided to go over 300 and like I think we have 350 plants that we're we're working on right now in a giant uh, greenhouse, and we're fitting. I can't even believe how much square footage. I got to do the math on that, but a huge. We basically tripled, if not. We doubled for sure, even tripled our gardening space by uh, going vertically. And yeah, it's it's a whole awesome thing. You can see all that on the B, on BC Gardening Guy on Instagram. You can also see uh, the uh, Facebook, which is San Diego BC Gardening. Uh, and this is a private group I made for a club out here, but you guys are more than welcome to join in. I will be posting a lot more videos there as well to get people interested uh, in growing their own food. And uh, I'm doing this uh, as a serious business. I've invested over $5,000 in this thing so far. And I'm looking to turn this into a business so that I can take care of my special needs daughter by myself. And um, yeah, I, I'm super excited about it and also to feed myself. And that's what I want for you guys to feed yourself, not just feed yourselves, but feed yourselves nutri high nutrition food. We're gonna get into that I think in one of these episodes next. You guys need to be aware of what's going on out there. Uh, your food is not very, that healthy for you. you need to take this into your own hands if for anything else not for nutrition do it for the flavor because I guarantee you you will never go back to grocery store bought food that was picked green that barely has any flavor there's a reason why top-end restaurants go to farmers like me to uh, get their fresh produce because you ain't gonna get it anywhere on the planet it doesn't come with the flavor the color and the richness is that and the energy I believe so yeah that's the show guys check out the links below that go check out this is up and in it guys uh, you can check us out on Facebook there's everything uh, besides the gardening stuff is up and in it you can go to a Facebook group you can go to TikTok and Instagram and YouTube they all uh, um, uh, up and in it has its own own thing besides the gardening thing here you can find it at all those platforms we haven't been posting too much and then uh, we will in the next few weeks once we get this gardening thing going but as I always say guys uh, go out there and have yourself a near life experience don't lose your muchness carry on the fire human up live it love it own it own it my friends